CataractCoach.com. More from her ASC arrest course. Your seats up front, don't be shy. Monocular patient 16 cut RK. True case, this is me operating. I wish I could blame her, resident. it's me. So here's the patient's other eye. Had surgery done elsewhere many years ago and is truly tysical. That's the other eye. Gosh. So now we are truly monocular here. And what are we going to do? Yeah, come on up front. Right here, there's some seats. Yep. Row two, three, and four. Plenty of seats. So here's what it looks like pre-op. What's that big honking thing like on the cornea, conjunctiva, deep ear cornea person? What is that? What am I going to do here? A pterygium. Is it just a pterygium? <laughs> is it okay or, if I take it? Or is it neovascularization? Was this patient in a contact lens? I don't, no, no contact. Here's pre-op. That's what it looked like at the slit lamp. So what do you, what do you make of that? Just a pterygium? Did she have a rupture in that area already and that just grew over? Like those, I'm not aware. Could be, not, not that I'm aware of, I don't know. There could have been an autoimmune process with secondary uh, conjunctivalization there. Yeah. It could have been a lot of things. Don't touch it. That's the bottom Stay line. Do not that. touch it. Oh, you guys are going to hate me. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to make your decision. Temporal corneal limbal, superior corneal limbal, temporal scleral, superior scleral. Where's your decision? Patient has a monocular and a very deep set eye. Where are you going to make your decision? Tell me. Temporal scleral. Okay. Where are you? Anywhere that you do not cross incisions. But that thing is temporal. What? Oh, no, no. You, the RK. The oh, RK. oh, the RK, I agree. Don't, don't intersect don't the RK. Don't ever cross those RK incisions. That's a disaster. And you so, could go like super temporal. You don't have to be like, so like between seats so that you move away from that. Right? Is this the left eye or right eye? Yeah. Which eye is the Patient's right eye, so I can do my left oh, yeah. hand. Oh, yeah. So, no, no right eyes just, are easy. Yeah, you, just you just turn just your structure. whole body around, and, and you, you're operating. That's super easy to do. You could go super o Super o temporal. Yeah. Or, yeah, super o temporal. Super temporal, right eye here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's easy. Oh, well, I'm, I'm not that smart. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, in, in this situation, so, so super temporal, temporal, obviously, if you're sitting here, I got to do it. Basically, I'll do left hand or fake with that. No. no Why? Just, it's your right hand. You just shift no, no. your body. Oops, sorry. Oops. The right, right eye here. We have flustered the great. Right, right eye here. <laughs> How am I going to make my... You just turn your chair Turn around, and dude. turn the microscope. And turn the microscope. Okay, I got to Should we you. demonstrate <laughs> this? Okay, <laughs> ready, Rosa? Let me demonstrate. Okay, look. Instead of sitting here, okay. I sit here, and the oculars are here. Okay. It's not that hard. Uh-oh. Well, Hello. Here, here's what I'm doing. What's the name? Here's what I'm doing. Oh, Jesus. Ay, ay, ay. Not so went, much cautery. If you have oh to touch a thing, don't use that much cautery. You're going to kill the eye. <laughs> I didn't do a corny clutch. I'm not that smart. So we dry that off. Okay, I'm gonna see. Look, I had to do the cautery. I hit the ophthalmic aorta. <laughs> so making my incision here, I will not intersect the RK because I promise. There's my diamond because we're in Beverly Hills. And now, okay, here comes the generous rexus. You know what? The rest of the cataract part's pretty straightforward. Why don't you stain the caps? Oh, it is stained. It is stained. So we'll do a little hydrodissection there. We'll get this nucleus going. Even though it's a high power lens, I think it's like a 26 or 28. Obviously, it's an arc, a myopic eye, so a big accident, like nice deep AC, plenty of room. Wolf this thing down. I really kind of do want to operate Irish plane because the, your visualization in the bag is so poor with all those RK cut, plus his arcus, plus those vessels there that I cauterized too much. So we'll clean this thing up, adjust your camera lighting here, your, your scope lighting, and now, oh, surprise, get that piece out. I don't want to leave that one behind. Wow, a lot of pieces. So once this thing's cleaned up, I'll get the lens in the bag, and you know the story doesn't end here. The story does not end here. Here comes the lens. Let's see what we got. Put that in there. It looks like it's a, a 28 and a half. Looks like toric lens even. Clean that up. And then obviously I'm going to suture the main incision. So I'll use a 10 uh, nylon and suture up that main scleral incision, I'll, and I'll close the conj up over it. And the main challenge we're going to have here is not interrupt. It's going to be post-op because you shouldn't have touched the temporal vessels there. DB told me I didn't listen. So here we go. We don't want me to show you like all routine cases where I like <laughs> cherry pick them to look like a rock star. You want to see like the reality. So close this up, everything looks good. I'm pretty happy. Here's post-op, let me show you. This is where the, the challenges start. Triamcinolone, an antibiotic, some everything agents, just bring the pupil down maybe. Looks great, happy. 
Fluorescent, check wow, everything just to be sure. Nice. Here's post up day one. Okay, keep looking. You're gonna hate me. I said, don't just, I told the guy, don't leave home yet. Don't leave LA. Just stay in LA. He flew in to see me. Here's day seven. Ah! Oh. Gosh. All right. What do I do now? Call me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness so it's like uh. yeah so it's melting the cornea is melting yeah so you what do i do more it. tears vanish kind of glands refer to colleague take back the or no, you can just you can just lubricate. You can place a bandage contact lens. You need to get the epithelium to heal. So you need to really kind of encourage the surface to to be lubricated and to heal. You could do serum tears. Autologous serum would be great in this case. You have to get the melting to stop. So you need to see this patient daily. You might have to glue that area, and you have to understand why is it melting. Is there, you know, if it's autoimmune and you just stirred up this autoimmune process, the patient may need systemic steroids, things like that. And you have to make sure you're not using offending agents on top, such as NSAIDs. That would be a disaster. So be really, really gentle with your topical drops as well. So, so a combination of a lot of stuff then. Yeah. yeah. And, and given, given the state of what the other eye looks like and that... You know, you and I are both not cornea specialists, like we're cataract, complicated cataract specialists. I would probably refer to a cornea colleague just to make sure yeah. that with a one-eyed monocular patient that they were getting. What, what about the idea of take, pull the conj over that area? Does that make sense? Like it was before? Like when the like, nature <laughs> actually healed the cornea the first time? Pull it, pull it over even more? never touch Okay, okay, this. but now what? Okay, now, take it back to the OR. That's what you're going to do. No, I'm asking. Is that a reasonable option? Uh, of course, because let's see it happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do all the above, so I do also refer to Would you, though, I have a question for Deep, who's a cornea specialist. Would you pull that conch over, or would you do a conch transplant from somewhere else that's not inflamed right now? You know, just do what you can do. I mean, I think in this case, I think, um, I think what he's going to show that he just pulls it back over like he found it because he didn't really resect any conch there. So there's, there's some play there. Um, the bottom line, you just got to cover that defect so it doesn't perforate the cornea. <laughs> yeah, so that's, I did a combination. So I, I, I did take him back to the oral, I'll show you that video, but I tried the BCL and the tears and everything else. And after a couple days, it just like, I just thought I'd feel more, I'd feel yeah. better if I could hide that defect. So, and I did refer to a colleague. Luckily, the guy is from Houston, and I sent him back to Doug Koch and Steve Flugfelder, who are geniuses and saved me, and the patient ended up doing beautifully. But yeah, here, I took him back to the OR. I said, I just want to, I, I hit the ophthalmic aorta again. And I bought a really No, that's just, good. You want that blood. Okay, that will then, help healing. I like it. So I, yes. I closed the conch, I put it over, and I'm going to even go to the other side and, and pull that conch over even more. I really wanted to override that defect. Just like, and I'll put in plenty of sutures, whatever it takes. And the patient obviously was very sweet, very kind of understanding. The surgery was actually a year ago. He sent me a follow-up email a year later, and he says, yeah, I want to let you know everything turned out great. And, and again, the, the, the guys at Baylor were amazing. Saw him and treated him. What he ended up meeting was what you said, uh, uh, autologous tears. He used uh, preserved free, free tears all the time, BCL, the works. Should I bury this knot? Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. So what mind. you can do at the end of the case, you can actually, that, that blood yeah? you know, right there, just put that on top of the cornea. So there's like a little patch. Oh, put the heme there. Patch. Yep. Oh. Yep, that's fantastic. It'll be healed the next day. What about amnion? Sure. Absolutely. You like, the question is, what about amnion? Yeah. You like amnion? Absolutely. Anything to cover the defect to, to encourage healing. So we covered it up. Luckily, oh, there's some viscoelastic on the eye just for extra lubrication. Here's day one after the conjunctival uh, pullover. Looks a little bit better. He actually did pretty well. But again, he went back to Houston, and the Baylor guys really saved my, my rear on this one. And the patient, luckily, was quite very happy. So in a case like this, I guess you would say don't touch those corneal vessels. That's your take-home message? Absolutely. Yes. I mean, it, when you just don't know what's under that, right? It, just don't touch it in a monocular patient. There, it was so easy to just move your incision, and that's something really important. These cases, instead of just doing your routine case, you really have to look at the whole picture, move your body, move the microscope, make the incision in between the incisions, the RK incisions. We saw a patient who developed endophthalmitis because the cataract surgeon just went straight temporal, 
through the RK incision, it ended up leaking. Wow. The patient developed endophthalmitis to NLP vision. Oh my goodness. So it was a disaster. So, and it would have been just a tiny little shift in the incision would have been totally fine and a totally different outcome. So I think that's the critical thing. Yeah, as someone who's never performed RK, sometimes you forget those RK incisions are 90 plus percent depth. Sometimes 100. Right. And even going between them, if it's very close and you only have like a fraction between your incision and the RK lines, I still prefer a temporal, scler like a, a scleral approach. Oh, 100%. Because if you, can't, you can see them splitting yeah. sometimes. And then and you like the, split, you check with the force and then? Oh, if they, if they split, yeah. If they split, it's going to take more than a surgery. It'll take a bunch, right? Yeah, it's like a hundred. <laughs> but yeah, that's also why every RK patient, I end up fluorescing them, just to check. That's a great idea, but also, yeah, everyone should be able to do a scleral tunnel incision for these patients to, 